All right guys, so today what I want to discuss is the difference between a cross cut like this and a ripping saw like this one. So the major difference between these two is the ripping has more of a chisel to it. So the teeth look like this, except they're a bunch of them while the cross cut looks more like a knife at an angle so it'd be like that so what is what are these intended to be used for oh the ripping is meant for cutting straight on the wood, so say if the grain is running this way, you would want to cut up this way, straight with the grain. And for a cross cut, you're going across the grain, so it leaves a much smoother finish. So, another example of a ripping saw is this Henry Diston, and if you look close, you can see that towards the gullet of it, it's more rounded than, say, the cross cut is, and that is because the ripping teeth are generally a lot bigger, and there's more, there's a higher chance of um, the tooth actually fracturing the rest of the saw. So that is why the Gullets on the ripping saw are more like a, they have a roundness to them, while these ones don't have to, because they're usually a lot finer. Now that's not always true, they do have somewhat of a curved gullet to them, just because the files always have a curved. Uh, the six-sided files have, I'll show you an example. This, it's a triangle file, but it actually has six sides because if it was only three-sided, it would never go deeper and the saw would just be a one-time use. So it actually has a side on the bottom of each side. Then you have the regular side, so that it's a six-sided file. So how a ripping saw works is you wanna have it at a 90, or not a 90, a, like a 45 to a 60 degree. I like about 60 to 70, which is about right here. Because if you're here and it's like this, you're going to be tearing out a lot more and it's going to be clean versus if it was at 90, it's going to be, you're going to be scratching the wood and it won't perform very well. Where if you were to do a 40, it would really be aggressive and it wouldn't, perf it wouldn't bite as nicely, and it would have a lot more tear out. So keeping it at a 70 to 60, you're keeping, you're gonna, your saw's gonna perform a lot better. So another example of a cross cut is this one and this one's sharpened and set 
same with this one and what you can tell with the cross cut is let me focus for you guys really quick that the points are a lot they're a little bit pointier versus this so if you can see the difference between the two there's a bigger point where the ripping is more of a chisel simple as that okay so how do you sharpen a cross cut it's actually what I would say a lot easier than sharpening a cross cut because you have to keep consistent angles on both sides so for ripping all you have to do is file straight across it's very simple and so you want your file to be at a 90 to your saw we also want it to be about 30 degrees to the side because if it's straight up and down like I discussed earlier it's just gonna scrape it and if you're at 40 it's just gonna be flat and it, your saw is not gonna go anywhere and it's gonna be a lot of tear out so just keep it at a 60 and then you want to skip a tooth like you would a cross cut because <clears throat> when we rotate our saw we're going to flip it around and file this way the reason we do that is there's going to be a bevel or not a bevel there's going to be some pieces of metal hanging off the edges of the sharp points so what will happen is when you're going cutting straight down a saw it'll actually start to curve if I was to do it this way so it doesn't produce square cuts if you were to file all the same side that's why you file one saw or one tooth here skip a tooth go here skip a tooth go here so I'll do a couple teeth so oh, and make sure you count your stroke so that's two three skip a tooth one two three skip a tooth one two three I'm making sure I'm still at that 90 degree angle and a 30 degree angle to the side so we'll do it again one two three so what you're looking for is for the tips to be nice and pointy and you don't want to see any light reflecting off the teeth when you've jointed it so right now there is still a little bit because I haven't gone this way which is fine so we'll try it this way one two three it's got no shiny points on the top which that is good so when you're setting the teeth it's the same thing it's just tooth pointing away from you and then you would flip it over you don't need to you can do setting all of it at once and then flip it over and do the same that's not going to affect your saw but how you would sharpen a crosscut like this. And I'm gonna have to switch out my file because my file's way too big for this 11 points per inch saw. So I'll grab a different file.
nice little tiny file by Nicholson. This isn't the new one, so I don't recommend going and buy the new ones because they're not exactly the best anymore. But if you can find the old Nicholson files, they're really nice steel and they're going to last you a really long time. So I'm going to bring you guys a little bit lower so you can see the finer tooth. Okay, so for filing a crosscut, you want to find the tooth that is facing away from you, or to the side. So, see this one, how it's facing that way? You, and if you were to go to the next one, you can't really... You see daylight through your file? Or if you were doing this one, there's no daylight going through it. So you'd want to file this tooth and as always you want to make sure you count your strokes and then you'd skip tooth one two one two one two one two and then once you've gone all the way down the saw you would want to flip the saw over and then you'd want to file the other way. So this one takes a little bit more skill because you have to go at a for about a 45 angle and then you have to switch to the other side and do a 45 on this side. But I prefer the cross cuts and they look a lot better. And they definitely are sharper. And they're a all-purpose saw versus the ripping are primarily just for the end grain, which <clears throat> I personally don't use the end grain too much. I don't cut the end grain at least. So I'll grab a craftsman handmade saw and I'll Chuck it up in my vise, show you guys how to sharpen this one. It's the same as a as the last one, but it's a little bit bigger, so it might help you guys out. And I'll grab a good file. I like this one. It's had a lot of use though, so that's the only downside of it. And files do wear out quite often. So bring it guys closer again. So look how I'm going at about a 45. And I want to keep it pretty much straight up and down, just slightly to the side though. And like the last one, I would want to flip the saw over and then go this way. But I'm not going to do it going this way because, again, there's the burr on the back side and it'll cause the saw to curve sideways, which, again, that's not good for a saw to do. Okay, so another example of a cross cut which I know someone will mention is the two man saw. Now this is a cross cut style because if you look close there's it's the same focus for you guys. It's the same as the little tiny hand saw where it's a chisel or it's not chisel effect because you can see it was filed at a 45 at a 45 same this way so that's why this is called a cross cut is because it is the same as this tiny hand saw it's the same thing it is a little bit different because this is a lance tooth on the cross cut and this is just a standard crosscut pattern, but what I'll show you 
is, I gotta go over and get it. There is this big two man saw and it is the same style as this little tiny guy. It's just the teeth are a lot bigger. So what I was saying earlier about the gullets, how they're rounded, that's so there's no tear out. So say if a lot of pressure was on this tooth, this wouldn't split the saw in half, which that's why if you go to the store and buy a new saw nowadays, I've actually had a few of my new saws I've got split in half. And it's because one, the steel's really cheap, and two, it's, they don't, they use like a laser cut, I'm assuming, rather than actually hand filing it. So, I have hoped you guys enjoyed this video and how I've gone over the difference between cross cut and hidden behind all of this, this little guy down here, the ripping saw.